that role, I decided I wanted a career in-house where I could have a bit more of an impact within a business and really see the results of my work. Um, so that saw me moving to sky betting and gaming. Um, after another couple of years there, I moved back to an agency for just a short period, quite quickly remembered sort of what I loved about in-house recruitment um, and, and really missed certain aspects of the role. And that saw me move to Kavea um, October 2019. So I've been there getting on for 18 months now. When I joined at Kavea, the whole TA function was really new. Um, prior to that, hiring managers really just tended to recruit in their own way. So I'm sure you can imagine um, it was a bit chaotic, <laughs> lacked any process. Um, so part of my role was to come in put processes in place, bring a little bit of structure. Um, we're now at the point where things run smoothly most of the time and I'm really starting to focus on other things like improving that kind of experience and, and all that good stuff. Um, now, we were really lucky to continue recruiting throughout all of last year and still doing so. Uh, we've actually hired almost 600 people since the first lockdown began. Um, and I've learned a lot throughout this time. So hoping just to share some of these with you. So March 2020, um, obviously the world as we knew it changed probably forever. Um, businesses were forced to adapt. The majority of workers shifted to working remotely, really forcing businesses to implement new technologies to support remote working and look at their flexible working policies making physical workplaces covered secure and providing greater support to people who were struggling both physically and mentally. Um, but recruitment was also massively impacted. So for those of us that were lucky enough to continue recruiting throughout the pandemic, we really suddenly needed to do this remotely. Um, but how can we ensure a positive candidate experience throughout all of this? Do candidates have different needs and what do we need to do differently? So next slide, please, Tom. Thank you. Um, so I'm sure you've all seen this before, um, but here is just a quick overview of the candidate life cycle. Obviously taking this from the start, attraction and sourcing, through screening, interview, um, feedback, offer, and onto onboarding. So I've looked into each part of the life cycle and considered what might need to be adapted due to the pandemic. And I've also surveyed candidates that we've hired throughout the pandemic to gain insight into their experience. Um, probably worth noticing that these are all digital candidates, so that might skew things a little bit. Um, but there's been some interesting insights, actually. So next slide, please. Thank you. So according to the Office for National Statistics, let me make sure I get this right. So of those already employed in quarter one and quarter two, 6.1% changed occupation in the first half of this year. And that compares to 5.7% in the same period last year. And that's people who are already employed. So people are still open to changing roles. Um, but what candidates are looking for in a new role has changed. And as recruiters, we, we really need to be aware of this. So hopefully you can see on my slide there, my survey suggests that candidates seem to really fall into two broad categories. Those who are still employed, but open to a move and those who are not, or their job might be a bit less secure and basically they're actively seeking employment. So employed candidates may be open to a career change, but they're much more cautious and more aware of the risks associated with changing jobs. Um, candidates who are out of employment are actually, they're becoming much more flexible in their requirements and they're open to considering opportunities that they might not have done previously where they were more secure. So you can see on my slides that um, quite a few people said, it made them realize there's no good time to change jobs, be brave, go for it, be more flexible to any opportunity. But then also a really large number of people, it made them more cautious or risk averse. Um, you can also see as well that locations becoming much less of a factor um, as businesses are working remotely and many plan to continue to do so post-COVID. But what does this mean for us as recruiters? So we have to try harder to convince those that are still in employment to consider a move and, and really reassure them that it is the right move. 
Um, but this situation has also led to huge numbers of job seekers who are suddenly willing to flex on their requirements and we need to make the most of this as well. Can we compromise somewhere in our needs in order to bring these people in? So next slide. So when it comes to attraction and sourcing, we really need to consider the candidates' needs and what would tempt them to make a move. Do, do they perhaps need a gentler approach at this uncertain time? If you go in all guns blazing and, and try to do the big sell, is it going to scare people off a little bit? So my survey showed on, on this question the most important factors when people were considered a new role um, throughout the last 12 months or so. Um, and it showed that job security and the security of the sector was really the, the most important thing to candidates. So assuming that if you're still recruiting throughout, um, throughout the pandemic and recruiting at the moment, your business is relatively secure, we need to think about how we can make sure we're communicating this to candidates. And it's going to be different, obviously, for every business from Kavea's perspective, I find it really helps to talk about all the growth and investment that's happening at the moment. Um, I think that just shows the commitment to, to the business and how secure we are. Um, I also find it useful to have some business figures to hand should a candidate question the financial performance of the business. I am getting asked that a lot more recently and I think rightly so. They just want to make sure that this is going to be a safe move for them. Um, also make the fact make the most of the fact that you are still hiring um, be vocal by on socials and again just use it to back up the security of the business um, now the next most important factor to the candidates that I spoke with was flexible working and, and not only throughout the pandemic and, and how it is at the moment but when we return to some sort of normality as well um, now that we know we can work from home and have realized many of the benefits that come with this, a lot of candidates, and I'm sure you're, you're all speaking with people who are saying the same thing, they're keen to maintain at least an element of this going forwards. Um, and it's really important to be honest about what the future of working will look like for you post COVID. You don't want to be selling a role to someone on the understanding that it's remote now. And then it turns out that they need to be in the office sort of two hours away from home, four days a week in a few months time. It's a, it's a big difference. So I think it's just about thinking about the differences between flexible working and remote working. They're, they're not the same and you need to work out what's best for, for you and your employees and, and just be transparent if, if you're still on that journey and working out exactly how it's going to happen, just be honest with the candidate. For, for some, they'll be happy with that, but for others, they really need kind of that um, clarity of how it's going to look in the future. Next slide, please, Tom. Thank you. Um, so on to the screening part of the candidate journey. So the screening call is often the first point of contact that a candidate has with the business. So it's obviously really important to make a good impression. And I think particularly at the moment, if a candidate's feeling a little bit hesitant about making a move, it's important to be sensitive, perhaps take a more sort of gentle approach than what you might sometimes and, and take the time to build that rapport and don't just dive straight in with questions. So a screening call is really about checking that the candidate is right for the job and the job is right for them. So think about what do candidates want and need from you. Ask them questions. Um, and I think it's particularly important at this time that we understand this so that we can set their expectations and really help alleviate any early early concerns if you can and it, it really isn't just about making sure that they check all your boxes and can do the job. Now, communication is arguably um, one of the most important factors of ensuring a good candidate experience. Um, and I think any time really, but especially at the moment, I've already said this, but be transparent and, and not only about the role and, and what it entails, but about the whole process. It's likely to be pretty different to when they've applied for jobs in the past. So be as clear as you can of, of how it's all going to look before anyone commits. Um, too much time or effort into this. Next slide. Thank you. Um, so on to interview. 
Now, the interview process is probably the part of the candidate life cycle which has been impacted the most by the pandemic. Um, lockdown and social distancing has made face-to-face -face interviews pretty much impossible uh, for the past 12 months. So we've all had to make the shift to remote interviews, which um, has been a challenge to say the least, I think for, for us from the business side of things, but for candidates as well. Um, now it is positive to see that the, the vast majority of the candidates that I spoke with felt that they had managed to perform um, to their full potential during their remote interview, although um, it is worth noting that these candidates are the ones which were successful in securing a role with us, um, so I'm sure that this will skew the figures somewhat, um, but it is nice to see that they felt that they could still perform. On to the next slide please Tom. So I also wanted to find out from our sort of successful candidates what information they thought was important um, to have prior to a remote interview um, and if there was any difference sort of in between this and just a typical interview. So um, obviously for any interviews it's really important to ensure that candidates have all the information that they need but with remote interviews there's additional factors to consider um, and we also need to make sure that you can get an impression of culture, values, all that sort of thing as well without people being able to see the office and, and actually see our people at work. Um, so for my survey I'd say that most of the information that candidates would like to have prior to interviews is pretty standard, whether that is for a physical or a remote interview, so things like um, the company, company information, uh, what will be covered in interview, details of the interviewees, information on the role and the responsibilities, I'd say you would expect to, a candidate to need that before any interview. But one key thing to consider really is ensuring that you communicate almost like the logistics of the remote interview and what's expected. So a lot of candidates won't have had a remote interview before. Um, so make sure you're providing information on the platform that you use, um, clear instructions on how to use it. Everyone seems to use different technologies and they're all slightly different to use. Um, Maybe even include a backup as well for peace of mind. So provide a phone number for the hiring manager or at least for yourself to call in case of technical difficulties. We've all, all had it happen. Surprised we've not had it on this yet. Um, and share what is expected as well in terms of formality. Is it cameras on, cameras off, dress code? Um, we really just want candidates to be fully briefed on what to expect so they can perform at their best and also just to reduce that uncertainty and, and the stress around it. Next slide, please. Thank you. Um, so I briefly touched on this in the last slide, but another huge factor to consider is how we can make up for candidates not seeing the office and meeting hiring managers sort of physically, really just getting a flavor of the culture. So we need to make sure that we're getting this information across to them in different ways um, since they won't physically be able to see it and help them make them feel comfortable in the decision that they're making. Obviously culture and the people that you work with is so, so important. You're working with these people day in, day out and you need to make sure that values align with yours, all that sort of thing. So it's really important that we're still getting this across. Um, so there's a few things that we've done. Um, really interested in hearing what other people have done as well. Um, but we've just done a few things to, to really help get this information across. So we've actually created a microsite specifically for Cabea Digital, um, just to give candidates a taste of our values, we introduce some of our people, um, the ways that we work, links to events and talks. Um, this is a work in progress, so if you have a look, do but judge, judge just yet, but um, it is coming along. We have also, we've also shared a lot of content online, um, like videos from meetups, blogs, uh, day in the life of, um, and I, whenever I'm booking an interview in, I, I share links to all of these, like our YouTube channel, and encourage them to spend some time taking a look at these, um, just to give them a bit of a taster. And um, also making them aware of any virtual events that you've got coming up as well. A lot of us have still been running our meetups just virtually. Um, so make sure they know when, when something like that's happening. Um, 
And this is a really interesting one, actually. Quite a few of the candidates that I spoke with suggested that it'd be really helpful to incorporate some sort of visuals or a video which could be shared perhaps over a screen in the interview or as a pack to send out, really to explain kind of the values um, what we call our North Star, so kind of the ultimate aim that we're all working towards and, and show a bit of a buzz of the office. Um, so I don't think that's going to be kind of a quick job to create, but it's something that I'm going to definitely look at putting together because I think it would actually be really great post-COVID as well um, to use a bit of a tool to communicate our culture going forwards. Um, now, it's also really critical as well that candidates are still meeting with the right people. Now, it, it can be harder, I know, in a remote interview to coordinate um, perhaps stakeholders or peers who aren't that main hiring manager just dropping in to an interview when it's remote. You know, like they might do when you're in the office, you might get people just popping in for five minutes to say hi. Um, but we still, we still need to make that happen where we can. Um, and just going back to kind of the, the remote working, throughout the interview process, we need to be clear on what remote working life is like for us at the moment. It's different with every business. Um, every business has a different approach. So ours is kind of do what you can when you can. The conveyor have been really understanding and really supportive. And I think it's important to get that across so they know what to expect um, when they join or if they join. And discussing what that working life will look like because when we return to normal and um, making sure the hiring manager has those conversations throughout the interview process as well so it's not just coming from yourself it may look slightly different for every team um, but it's important to be consistent and transparent um, as it is a huge factor to those candidates so essentially just always setting your candidates up for success prepare them however you can um, on to the next slide please Tom Thank you. Um, so on to feedback. Now, quality and timely feedback has always been a really important part of the candidate life cycle. Um, the last thing you want to do is leave a bad taste in a candidate's mouth. It can be really easy to gain a bad reputation. And particularly in some markets, it's, it's quite a sort of small talent pool and you don't want to be turning anyone off. Um, you know, they might not be right for you quite now, but you know, give it six months time a year and you might want to be hiring them again. And they talk, so um, yeah, really important to provide that feedback. Now, obviously the pandemic and you know, increased unemployment rates has resulted in increasing job seekers for a lot of positions, particularly for those that perhaps are a bit less specialist or, or niche skill set. And this means, I'm sure you've, you've probably all seen articles online, but candidates have been re rejected literally hundreds of times before they can manage to secure a job. And I can only imagine how kind of disheartening and, and demotivating that must be. So we is again kind of going back to being sensitive, provide them with that good constructive feedback, which they can build on. So I, this is something I actually picked up from my time when I was working at Skybet. So I always try to give an unsuccessful candidate um, three positives and then three takeaways to work on in the hope that then they can go away, develop themselves and, and be successful next time round. And yeah, it, it can be time consuming. Um, but surely if candidates have taken the time to apply to work for us and especially if they've committed time to an interview, it's the very least that we can do um, at the you know very least let them know the outcome you know if you have got hundreds and hundreds of applications for a, a call center role and you literally can't be going through giving them personal feedback at least let them know that it's a no and um, it's shocking how many people reply to a rejection saying thank you for letting me know because most don't um, so yeah just going back to to be sensitive really and remembering that everyone's in slightly different situations at the moment. Uh, on to the next slide please Tom. Thank you. So on to the offer. Um, you know I'm not going to teach you how to suck eggs you all know how to, to make an offer but as always um, make sure you, you know the candidate by this point. You, you know them, you know the drivers and what they're looking for when making an offer. Um, particularly at the moment, uh, candidates are probably going to be a bit wobbly and, and fair enough, really. Um, so we need to make sure that we get that offer right. Um, we've had our fair share of candidates withdraw 
off the stage because they get cold feet. Um, sometimes it's less scary to stay where you know. So it's our job really, I think, as, as recruiters to, to hold the hand a little bit, reassure them at this strange time and um, answer any questions that they might have. So referring back to one of the questions from earlier in my survey, what were the most important factors when considering a new role? Um, we know that job security was really important to a large proportion of candidates. So really reiterate this at offer stage. Um, I find this does help a little bit with the cold feet so they know that they're making a, a safe decision. Um, also bear in mind the key drivers as well, like remote working capabilities and what working life will look like post-COVID. By this point, like I said, you should know them, you should know what they're looking for, and hopefully you can provide that. So just make a point of it in the offer, essentially. And um, ultimately, going back to that word transparent, but just be as transparent as you can and provide them with all the information that they need to, to make the right decision. On to the next slide, please. So onboarding. Um, a seamless and welcoming remote onboarding experience really is the, the best way of engaging new employees from the off. Um, but for organisations that are set up for face-to-face -face inductions and introductions, like most of us, I'm sure, this year remote onboarding has really been a, a challenging adjustment. Um, thankfully, most of the candidates that I spoke with felt they still had good onboarding despite being remote. But there, had, there was some interesting comments out of that. Um, so on to the next slide, please. So we do have a really robust induction programme in place, um, but there is still plenty more that we could be doing. So I'm just going to run through a few things that have either worked for us or that we're trying to implement. But again, really sort of keen to hear what you guys are all doing as well. So... I think it's really important to have plenty of post offer sort of touch points, if you like, before they start. Um, again, it's about preventing that cold feet um, due to the current climate. They, I think there's much more hesitation around moving and, and people are thinking things through over and over and over again in their head. Um, and we don't want them to, to sort of get scared before they start because it's all gone a little bit quiet and withdraw. Um, I also find it really helps to create a 